Many years ago, I had a conversation with a grandmaster who is one of the world's leading experts on advantage conversion in chess. He said something to me that had me thinking about it ever since every time I get a technically winning position in the endgame. He said something to me that changed the way I view those positions. I hope that it will change your chess as well. He said that the most technical chess player is not the one that wins in the least amount of moves. It's the one that gives opponent least amount of counterplay. Do not rush, coordinate your pieces, and limit opponent's options. Let's take a look at two real examples how this is used. In the position in front of us, white is a pawn up and has huge space advantage which gives him better pieces. Engine evaluates the position as plus 4, which is completely winning almost regardless of what you would play for the white pieces. However, how would you start converting this position? And so the things that I see my students often do, and they're not the right things to do in this position, they try to force the victory right away. For example, they would put this rook behind the pawn and just try to win the game by simply pushing the b pawn. Or they would play a move like rook c2, try to invade to the seventh rank and cause damage over there. Let's learn from Akiba Rubinstein. The first phase to converting this position is centralization and activation of the king. King will be very useful defender of the b pawn and so the other pieces will be able to go to more active squares instead of babysitting that pawn. So first we move the king towards the queen side where we have an advantage. Now the second phase of converting this position is to coordinate our pieces. Our rook is on the open A file, bishop is all right, but the knight could be much better. So what follows is the move knight to c4. Perhaps now we could already start pushing the b-pawn. Rubinstein says no. I would like to improve my pawn structure on the king side and fix my opponent's structure for two reasons. First of all, the pawns are on the dark color, which makes this bishop of his bad. And secondly, it takes away all kind of options for him to create counterplay with g6 and f5. This is not necessary or vital, but it's a useful thing to do because black can't do anything and we have all the time in the world to continue improving our position. Now we play rook to a6. In the case of bringing the king to the a file later on, this rook provides us a shelter from the checks of opponent's rook. After bishop to c7, Rubinstein improves the pawn structure even further by placing another pawn on h5, which now fixes the pawn on g7. Only now, when we have very active king, we have very active bishop, knight, rook, all the pieces are playing, the options on the king side are completely limited. He starts pushing the pawn. One could think that in order to push the pawn to b5, we can play knight to a3. But this forces the knight to go to a passive square. So if possible, we want to arrange our pieces in such a way that there is harmony and coherence, they're all active. It's better to move the king towards a4 square in order to achieve this goal. Black offered the exchange of rooks, after which we could just simply push the pawn. And now this is very easy win as our king will reach the square on a6. Knight at any moment if this knight is off or even if it's there could go to c6. And simple pawn promotion or rather he will have to give up a piece for this pawn will follow very soon. And black resigned in only a couple of moves. Let's take a look at another example. This is practically close to a winning position. Perhaps the engine could hold it, but white has a bad bishop against a good knight. That's one very big problem. Rook is controlling the open h file, which is the only open file right now in the game. And they also have a weak pawn on b2, which is currently pressed and doesn't allow the rook to say go to the squares like h1. 
how to convert this position you can pause the video and try to devise a plan of how we look for coherence in this position what is imperative in this position is to limit opponent's counterplay white wants to play b3 at the right moment or even now and activate the rook for example if we were to play something like rook to h5 what opponent could do at the right moment or even right now is simply play the pawn move to b3 and then the rook is going to be activated so an imperative move for black in this position is to play rook to a8 exclamation mark which takes away white's option to create counterplay with b3 as we're attacking the pawn on a3 white played king f3 in this game what black is doing next is he tries to activate or centralize their king it's completely not playing and i hope you can find a way a long journey king has to take but where the king should be ideally in order to have black's army convert this into a victory you're absolutely right ideally we want the king probably invading through these gaps and gates and reaching squares like a2 or c2 it's a long journey but remember that white's rook is paralyzed defending the g uh, the b2 pawn after which if it drops rook takes a3 and deadly consequences will follow black starts by marching the king and white didn't find anything better but actually to wait in this position and to be honest even if you're stockfish there is nothing that white can do in this position they're completely limited and have no options to create counterplay black moved the king which resembles a little bit of the last game and now if we play king to a5 black thought i was playing this game so i thought uh, white could now play b3 this was a blitz game so perhaps it's not perfect but i think that the concepts that we're learning were perfectly executed in this game so right now our rook would not be attacking a3 so what black did is playing the move rook h8 for now white played king g3 to stop the invasion to the squares h3 and h2 however i devised a plan that now once i'm invading with the king and if they don't play b3 i will simply come with the king and win the game like this now when they play b3 i can take they take and once i play rook h1 their rook is trapped on the square b3 it cannot go to b1 and my knight is covering the b2 and b4 squares and with the next move i go king a4 after which they will have to give up the rook for the knight and black is entering a winning game black won i hope you enjoyed and find this video useful if you did i would appreciate if you leave a comment or put a like on this video you can also consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach this is my full-time job for many many years i'll be waiting for your emails and my contacts are on the right side of the screen thank you for watching wish you best of the day and see you in the next video bye bye